All right, good morning, everybody. It is good to see you this morning here at Victory. We aspire to be a church for the city, building families and impacting the community. Before we get going this morning, we wanted to make a note that we had a lovely flower display here last week, if you were here, and those were set out in remembrance of Glenda's mother, Erna Bauer, who passed away June of 2015, July, thank you, July 16th of 2015. Uh, We remember and we celebrate and honor Erna. Uh, I don't know this morning, I don't know if it's the smoke that's rolled in or what it is, but I've been popping Claritin here this morning. Um, But I want to say that if I start tearing up during service, it's because of you, Pastor Roland. You, (laughs) You start speaking, I start weeping. It's just how it goes. So, so, speaking of tears, uh, tears of joy, we are only $14,000 away from reaching our roof goal. That's like 50 bucks in the U.S., so this really isn't that much. Uh, so, we are, we are getting close. So, if you feel led to give for that, you can, you can do so. Uh, another joyful event that uh, we'd love for you to circle in your calendar, or if you don't, no longer do the circling of calendar, put it in your phone. Uh, September 8th, September 8th is our kickoff Sunday. Now this isn't just kickoff Sunday, this is carnival kickoff Sunday. We will be having two services that Sunday, and following the 1030 service, we will be having a carnival. And so we're going to be grilling up sausages, we are going to be, we have a dunk the pastor tank that will be happening. Um we, uh, we're going to have, there, there's going to be beanbag toss, cornhole, th- things like that. A lot of different, a lot of different uh, fun carnival and yard games. We're going to have some music. It's, it's, there's there's going to be some, good, it's going to be a good time. This means, though, that we need help. So we do need volunteers. And so if you would like to volunteer, we're going to be having sign-up sheets in the, va- the back. If you will be here on September 8th and you want to run one of those games, you're passionate about cornhole or something like that, then please sign up in the back and uh, we would love to, we'd love to have your help. We need your help. September 8th, kickoff Carnival Sunday. This goes along with our 50th anniversary year. This is kind of our second 50th anniversary celebration as we look to reaching our community, impacting the community, welcoming in neighbors, inviting friends. Uh, September 8th is a great opportunity to do so. Uh, In two Sundays, August the 4th, following the service, we will have our Senior Visitation Training Seminar. And so if you are are interested in helping us visit, we have an entire congregation of people who are in shut-ins that are unable physically to come to service here. Many of them join online. If that is something you are passionate about or would like to know more about and how we can effectively minister, Pastor Roland and Chaplain Dallas will be leading that August the 4th after the service. Uh, last, last week we mentioned we need more help with food for friends, more frozen meals, as well as some more canned goods for our food pantry. Those have slowly been coming in. We thank you for that, but we do need more. And so if you're interested in putting together a frozen meal that can go in our food for friends freezer or bringing in canned veggies, canned fruit, things like that for our food pantry, we very much are asking for that and would appreciate that. You can bring that in at any point during the week and just talk to Gene in the office about that. Finally, kids, 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 if you are here today, are, you are invited for our final song today to come up and grab some instruments that are over by Cheryl uh, over there. Grab some instruments, grab some shakers, and jam along with the worship team, the final worship song today at the end of service. You are invited to come up. Okay, with that, I turn this over now to Pastor Roland. Well, please rise as we begin our service together this morning. We begin as all things do in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We take a moment to reflect before our God in this time.
Gracious God, have mercy upon us. In your compassion, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Your sins are indeed forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I see we're having a bit of technical stuff. There we go. We will sing together, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Two slides back. Thank you. Well, dear brothers and sisters, Lord, have mercy. O oh, Christ, hear us. God, the Father in heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and we invite forward the children for the children's message. All right, kids in the house, come on down. All right.
right, come on, guys. What a summery-looking crew we have here. <laughs> hey, Daniel, nice shirt, bud. All right, how's summer going, guys? Good, wow, I'm glad to hear that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys, I got a question for us this morning. Can somebody please tell me, what is a shepherd? We just sang it. What is a shepherd? Yes, Person who guides sheep. Okay, good job, Julian. That's, that's right. Person who guides sheep. How? What are the things a shepherd actually does? What does a shepherd actually do? How does a shepherd guide their sheep? Yeah. With a stick, yes. With a rod and a staff. Yes, that's right. Good. How else? How do they do it? What do they do? Anybody know? Anybody ever done shepherding, taking that class in school? Well, they have different calls they have for their sheep because their sheep know their voice and they'll only listen to their voice. They take them to different fields where there would be good grass. They take them to different streams where there will be, whoop, where there will be uh, water for them to drink. What happens when wolves come around or when thieves or bears come around? The shepherd fights for the sheep. The shepherd fights for the sheep. Yeah, that's where that staff comes into play, right? They can swing that around like a ninja. Yeah, so they, the shepherds will defend and protect the sheep. Okay, so if this is what a shepherd does, and that's how a shepherd does it, in the Bible, in a couple of different places, Jesus is called a shepherd and called a good shepherd. Why would Jesus be a shepherd? How is Jesus a shepherd? What do you think? Leads us, yes. Guides us and takes care of us. Good. Okay, that's okay. Does Jesus protect us too? Ninja Jesus, yeah, he comes in and protects us, yeah. Sometimes, in our gospel reading today, Jesus even does a miracle. Jesus, as our shepherd, works miracles, things that we can't explain that he does. To help us think about that miracle a little bit, I have this basket. Now, in this miracle, you might have heard of this one before, there's all these people, and none of them have anything to eat. And so there's the, the, this little boy comes up and he's got, he's got fishes, a couple of fishes and a couple of loaves of bread. Does anybody know what Jesus does? What? Yeah, Jesus makes it super big. That's right. Jesus prays over the bread and the fish and, all, and miraculously everybody gets fed. And so we actually have here some mini loaves that were baked for you guys yesterday. And so what I'm, you go ahead and take one. Take one here. It helps us to think about it. Think about this miracle. Go ahead and take a loaf. Take a loaf, take a loaf. You want one? You want a loaf of bread? Yes. Uh, no fish, sorry. <laughs> Actually, great question I was going to tell you. Don't tell Pastor Roland, but you can eat it in here. Go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> while you're eating your bread and your loaf of bread, well, here's what I want you to think about. Jesus is our good shepherd. He can work miracles in our lives, and even when life gets hard sometimes, and it gets hard, doesn't it? Sometimes things don't go as you want it to go. Sometimes people are mean to you. But we remember that Jesus loves us. He died on the cross for us. That he created you. That he's always with you. He'll never leave you. That he leads you through life. That we can trust in him. And that he's going to work miracles in your life too. And he even says, I am the bread of life. He is life. And when we believe in him, we experience that life too. Okay? So I'm going to ask that you guys stand up. Stand up, everybody. We're going to pray for you, congregation, if you'd like to extend your hand forward as we pray over the future of the church. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our kids, for who you've created them to be. Lord, may they always remember that you are always with them, that you'll never leave them, even when life gets hard. They can count on you. They can depend on you. They can trust in you. And Lord, we thank you for the miracle that they are. And we pray, Lord, that they would see 
the miracles that you work throughout their life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, go back to your seats, your loaves of bread. And with that, I invite our reader to come forward this morning. Our first reading is Jeremiah 23, 1 to 6, from the New Living Translation. What sorrow awaits the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to these shepherds. Instead of caring for my flock and leading them to safety, you have deserted them and driven them to destruction. Now I will pour out judgment on you for the evil you have done to them. But I will gather together the remnant of my flock from the countries where I have driven them. I will bring them back to their own sheepfold, and they will be fruitful and increase in number. Then I will appoint responsible shepherds who will care for them, and they will never be afraid again. Not a single one will be lost or missing. I, the Lord, have spoken. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. Psalm 23. This is one of my favorite passages. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, leads me still waters. he revives my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who troubled me. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ephesians 2, 11 to 22. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days you were living apart from Christ, you were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility towards each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for our gospel acclamation.
Well, my friends, our gospel this morning comes to us from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, you feed them. With what, they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have, he asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue our worship singing together Psalm 23.
Well, let us pray. Lord Jesus, today we gather together and we say, in the midst of it all, I will trust in you alone. Lord, would you lead us as a shepherd? As we open your word, would you lead us through the twists and turns, the ups and downs of our lives? For we give glory, honor, and praise to you, to you alone. For praising you is why we exist. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, if you were with us last Sunday, we finished up last Sunday from the book of Amos, and we talked about us not getting all caught up in our qualifications, our past achievements, our experiences, but rather getting caught up in the Holy Spirit, allowing the Spirit to use you and I, normal, everyday people, to do His work. This morning, from there, I've got a quick question for us to get us going today. I want to ask you this, how do people describe you? Think about that for a moment. How do people describe you? Are there any fun adjectives that people use to describe you or you've ever been described with? Think about that for a moment. If you know the person next to you and you have some fun adjectives, you can let them know what those are. How about descriptors? Descriptor words used to describe you? Any memorable phrases that are attached to your name? and to your life. Sometimes I I wonder if Jesus ever thinks that. If he ever asks, what do people think of me? How do they describe me? Are there any fun adjectives they use to depict who I am and what I do? As I was thinking of that last one, I was thinking, oh boy, yes Lord, I have lots of colorful and lively things that people use to describe you with. Today we receive one of the greatest descriptors of our Lord in one of the most well-known and often used passages of Scripture in history, the 23rd Psalm. I'd expect that some of you know that one very well, maybe even by heart. He is our good shepherd. He leads his flock, you and I, to good land, to good pastures, to still waters, to refreshment, to restoration. This truth is something that we need to continually hear and to continually remind ourselves of. For when life gets hard and suffering comes and it will come, this often is the first truth that we cast aside. Is he still the good shepherd when life is chaotic? Is he still the good shepherd when life is despairing? Just as a shepherd does, he feeds us. Our gospel today demonstrates that sometimes it's even miraculous. And perhaps the testimony in your life, you can name miracles that happen that you can't explain. This feeding is something we pray. We pray this every single Sunday. One of the great petitions in the Lord's Prayer prays this, Give us this day our daily bread. Have you ever really thought about what we are praying when we pray that petition? On one hand, we are asking our good shepherd to lead us to green pastures. We're asking for his provision. Maybe when you pray that prayer this morning, which we will do in a few minutes, You're praying for a financial need in your life or in someone else's. Maybe when you pray that this morning, you are legitimately simply praying for food on your table. Maybe when you pray that prayer this morning, you're asking for something like a stronger faith. But when we pray that prayer, we are also asking for him, for the good shepherd himself, for his presence in our lives. For as I told the kids, Christ says that he is the bread of life. Not just the one who guides and leads, but the nourishment, the restoration, and the miracle in and of himself. Hallelujah. St. Paul in our Ephesians reading today encourages us. He encourages us to see that we are indeed fed. 
That's a great first step, recognizing that the Lord is at work in your life. That we are fed on him and by him. He encourages, encourages us to see that we are led by him, shepherded through this life, through the ups and downs, the twists and turns, on the mountain peaks and in the deep valleys. We are led by him. And as we are fed and shepherded by him, St. Paul tells us that as we do that, we together are built up as his people, ready to do his work. That is us. That is us together. As you look around, you see the family of God. That is the church. It is a good and necessary reminder for us that our foundation, our cornerstone, the central focus, the reason we remember that we even exist is and has to be Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of this house and the good shepherd of our lives. If we forget that, if we lose sight of that, and it can happen in our individual lives and it can happen in the life of a church, then we have to ask ourselves, if we lose sight of that, then whom are we following? If we are not listening to him in a life of prayer, then we got to ask ourselves, then whom are we listening to? In Jeremiah today, he says strongly, woe to those who scatter the flock. Friends, while we seek to walk according to the Lord's voice and His direction, we have to be careful. We have to be careful as a church. We have to be careful as families, and we have to be careful as individuals. There is an enemy out there prowling around, as Scripture says, like a lion looking to devour his prey. There is an enemy out there who is the one, Scripture says, who seeks to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan is in the business of disconnection and he is in that business ruthlessly and relentlessly. Disconnecting you from your spouse in your marriage. Disconnecting you from your children. Disconnecting you from your friends. Disconnecting you from your church family. And ultimately, disconnecting you from your relationship with God leading to your defeated soul, which is his ultimate goal. And so, friends, if there is something in your life offering you and bringing about disconnection in your life, this morning is time to take a hard look at that. If we are beginning to stray away from the faith handed down to us, this morning we need to take a long, hard look at that. And so what can we do? Jude 3 reminds us that faith has been delivered to us. It cannot be changed. We have faith. 1 Corinthians 11.2 reminds us that the passing of the faith is lived out by that which has been delivered. Faith has been delivered to us. In the word, in the sacraments, it's been passed down to us through 2,000 years of the church. It's lived out in step of the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a reminder to us that we are not in the business of teaching something different, of teaching something new, or of breaking away from the apostolic faith. Victory Lutheran Church is not in the business of teaching something different than what's been taught for 2,000 years. One might ask, well, we're a Lutheran church. Where does, that, does that come into play in this? And the answer is yes. Our confessions declare adherence to the prophetic and apostolic scriptures through the grace of the Holy Spirit and pledged to the symbols of unity, our creeds, which we will say together in a few moments. So I want to ask, what about you in your own life? Do you personally stick to the faith once delivered for all? That which points to the kingship of Jesus Christ and only the kingship of Jesus Christ. Or does it get tempting to listen to something else? To listen to someone else that ultimately leads to disconnection. My friends, if he truly is the good shepherd, and if he truly desires to feed you, then anything that leads you away from that is not from him. 
My friends, the truth this morning is He is good. He always has been and He always will be. He wants to lead you to green pasture. He wants to feed you. He says, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. If we're looking at ourselves in the mirror this morning, could we say that's of us? That we know his voice, we listen to his voice, and we seek to follow his voice. Are there other voices out there that take us away from the faith once delivered for all? My prayer this morning over us is that we would know his voice. That you and I would hear his voice and that we would seek to follow his voice. My prayer is that God may give us the strength that we need to cut away that which seeks to cut us away from him. The word, the sacrament, and the Holy Spirit. You and I are not alone in our walk of faith. Life gets hard. Life gets challenging. We look at the news and we find despair and destruction all around us. We find the unknown, chaos. We don't know what the future is going to hold. That is our reality right now. But we know that our faith has been delivered to us. We know that we have something that will last eternally. And we know that in the midst of it all, we praise the Good Shepherd, the one who leads us and feeds us and brings us to places of restoration, of healing, and of reconciliation. And for that truth and that hope this morning, we say Alleluia and Amen. With that, I invite us together to respond by standing and singing together, Break Now the Bread of Life. Well, let us now join together and confess the faith delivered unto us by centuries of our faithful ancestors in the words of the Nicene Creed as we say, 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We do give thanks to God for his continued provision of the ministry here at Victory. If you feel at all called or led today to give and tithe, we have various options to do so. Of course, we have our physical op offering box at the back of the sanctuary, but we also have various e-giving options, which you can find enumerated, explained, and accessible at victorylutheran.ca. So let us join now together in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Lord, you are the good shepherd and you have led us so faithfully to this point. Continue to lead us faithfully and help us to heed your call. May we be not obstinate, may we not get distracted, but instead always keep our eyes fixated on you, our shepherd, and fixed on the cross from whence flows our salvation. We also pray, Lord, that we would uphold the faith that has been delivered to us, the faith delivered once for all, that we would not err to the left, to the right, but instead, once again, remain fixated on what has been handed down to us, the apostolic deposit spoken of in Jude, the gospel in its purity. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray for those suffering from any smoke, related issues at this time. Anyone with lung conditions, asthmatic conditions, Lord. We pray also for any of our brave men and women fighting the fires all across this country, Lord. We thank you for our first responders and we ask that you bless them with safety and the strength to complete the task that you have given them. Lord, in your mercy. Father, as we look around the world, we ask for peace and prosperity to be maintained. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy to this country, and we ask that you would bind us in a unity of love to our neighbor and even indeed to our enemies. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray, Lord Jesus, for any who are sick or unwell, especially those in the hospital. We ask that you heal them body, mind, and soul, that your Holy Spirit would come upon them and restore them and give them comfort and peace. Be also with their families, friends, loved ones, that they would be able to support them in this time. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for our farmers and ranchers in this season. We ask that you bless them with abundance. We ask that you give them favorable weather for the harvesting of their crops and for their livestock, that not only would they prosper, but the whole nation would have food. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord Jesus, as we prepare to partake of this heavenly food, the true bread of life, we ask that you would prepare us, body, mind, and soul. We know we are unworthy of this supper, and yet you invite us by faith to come forward to receive of you, Jesus Christ. Help us to do so. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All repentant Christians who believe that the true body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ comes to us in, with, and under these gifts of bread and wine are welcome at the Lord's table. We offer gluten-free wafers as well as grape juice for those who require or desire them. 
Please note that anyone is welcome to come forward for a blessing. Just cross your arms over your chest to indicate you will not be communing. Alternatively, according to your conscience, feel free to abstain and remain seated during this sacrament. And as we prepare to enter into the great thanksgiving and begin our communion liturgy, we take a moment to reflect that Jesus, who is the bread of life, has given himself to us, not just on the cross, but in this holy meal for the forgiveness of sins. He is our daily bread, word, sacrament, and Holy Spirit. And may we be united in the love that he shares so freely with us. And so, dear friends, brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. At this the whole church exalts you in great joy. Amen. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed and handed over into suffering, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to his Father in heaven, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to his Father in heaven, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Hear us, merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, that through your body and blood we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Amen. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We join now together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite forward those assisting with communion this morning.
Well, let us stand in the power of Christ, shall we, as we head out with a benediction from our Lord himself. And so, Lord Jesus Christ, who has called us to this Holy Supper, we thank you for your mercy, that you have nourished us with your very own body and blood, and that you have filled us with your goodness. O oh Lord, abide with us. In your hands we commit ourselves and put our trust. Amen. Receive now the benediction of our Lord Jesus. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I now invite forward any children that want to find some instruments and play along at this last song, May Your Kingdom Come. Well, go in peace and serve the Lord.